Welcome to the Pizza King Podcast, your destination for all things pizza business. I'm your host, Tyrell Reed. And every week, we're taking a deep dive into the behind the scenes world of running a successful pizza business from team building to sales growth, multi unit strategies, and much more. Doesn't even matter if you're a pizza vet, just starting out in the game, just your first shop, whatever you're doing, this podcast will be your go to resource for tips, strategies, and success stories. As always, send me your questions to info at tyrellreed.com. Go connect with me on Instagram at Pizza King Podcast. Let's get into the episode. So number one, it's going to cost more money than what you expect. Number two, it's going to take much longer than what you plan. And number three, it's going to be much harder than what you're currently doing. But if you decide that that's worth it for you, we can be incredibly value for you, invaluable for your future. You just got to decide if it's worth it for you. All right, there we go. Now, now we live. Welcome back. Pizza King podcast. I'm your host, Tyrell Reed. Back for another episode. Super excited today. This is episode 10. That's a milestone for us. 10 pieces of content out into the universe. We have continued to grow our downloads every single episode, meaning we got a new record at episode nine. Super excited about that. All of that happens because of you, the listeners, the folks that are tuning in, the folks that are sharing the podcast, the folks that are sending questions, the folks that are commenting on the, on the, 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 the content on social media, all of that happens because of you. We hit a milestone on downloads over a hundred downloads, man, I'm pumped. I'm pumped and I'm just, I'm excited to continue to come back and bring you more this week. We're talking about uh, all, all the things that you, not all of the things, three things that you should expect when opening a new pizzeria. So I wanted to go back into that one. I was always, that's always good content. And there's always a lot of questions around what it's like to, uh, to be a first timer in the business. And I also have a nice, a nice piece of piece of value to give, you know, always, always say, I want to add value. I want to do this for the community. I want to provide any, any type of value that I can. So I've been working on, on a new store opening checklist. I got that all ready to go. Anybody that wants to just email me or DM me or shoot me a, shoot me a comment or something and say, T look, send it to me. I want it because I'm about to go, I'm about to go down this journey. I've been on YouTube. I've been in the Facebook, Facebook groups. I've been, you know, consuming content on Instagram. I've been watching TikTok videos. I've been I've been on Google real hard. I'm reading all the articles about how to how to open a pizzeria. And there's so much information that is is it's just overwhelming. Let me help you. I got a, a simple checklist that I like to use um, just to just to make sure I'm not missing some of the important things. And look, every project is different. There's always going to be things that come up. There's always going to be there's always going to be unexpected happenings in the process of building out a restaurant, any type of restaurant, even if even if it's a food truck. There's always this these, these unknown factors, but when you have a nice solid plan, you got you know you got some something to help guide you. It makes it it makes the road slightly less rough. It's still gonna be hard. It's still gonna be tough, but it makes the road slightly less rough. That's the best way I can put that. So if you wanna you wanna get your hands on this on the checklist, I don't know. It's literally just like a Google Doc says new store opening checklist is not fancy. It's not anything I'm working on that. It might get fancy on you, but for now, anybody wants it, man, I'll send you, I'll send you the link. You can print it, you can use it. And if it helps you and, and it helps your business, then I am, I am grateful and, and certainly happy to do anything I can to, to, to assist you with that. So hit me up, hit me up. I got it. Pizza of the week this week. Uh, really just an old to a classic. I, I posted on the store page yesterday about just, you know, the classics never die. And for me, the classic is is straight up the cheese pizza, you know, dough sauce cheese. Keep it simple. Dough sauce cheese. And I, I only I made this. I chose this as pizza of the week because I had a comment. And for anyone that doesn't know, we always do. We do a promo first pie on us. If you if you anyone that follows or lives in Tampa Bay area want to get in, want to, want to try our pizza first pies on us. You sign up for my rewards um, program, or really it's just joining our email list. You sign that list, you sign up for the list, you join the program, 
you get a free 10 inch cheese pizza, a personal cheese pizza. And there was a comment on one of one of the videos that I posted that it was something to the effect of how how can I determine if your pizza is good by simply by just getting a 10 inch cheese pizza? And that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me because in my world, that is the only way to determine if somebody can do if, if somebody can really make some pizzas. Can can you execute the simple? Can you execute the basic? Can you execute the core of what our of what we do and what our business is, dough, sauce, and cheese. And if you can knock that out of the park, then then chances are most of the things that go beyond that are going to be pretty, pretty damn delicious, in my opinion. So that to me, that's the ultimate test of of a pizza shop. Like, can is the cheese pizza good? So I just thought that was interesting from that person's perspective. Maybe they're maybe they want more, or maybe they like to to have a, a a more broad view or spectrum of the offerings in order to determine, you know, if something is good or not. But what do you think? I I think cheese pizza. If the cheese pizza is good, then then we can work with that. The cheese pizza sucks. There ain't no need for me to try the pepperoni. <laughs> That's just how I look at it. So yeah, pizza of the week, cheese pizza, classic, old to the classic. O to the classic. And and speaking of O to the classic, we were we were having like, you know, just like some music night here at the house. And we always like just scrolling YouTube and playing music for the kids. And we always get into these old school, new school battles. And the the wife and I took took a turn down crunk. And I don't know if you remember the crunk era from Atlanta with Lil John and Eastside Boys and and Yin Yang Twins and Outcast and all and all these you know all these not Outcast but all of these cats from like the South. That was a good ass time of music in music. So it was like I heard a we heard a song and I'm like man I'm a I'm gonna use that song on a on a video. And the video I used was just the cheese pizza and it was and the caption said the classics never die, the classics don't go away, and the cheese pizza is a classic. Some of that music from that era is also classic and I hope it never goes away. And if I can do anything to bring it back, I'm bringing Crump back. Let's bring Crump back. Shit. But that's my two cents on pizza of the week. I also had a lady that complained about the size of the cheese of the 10 inch cheese pizza, but I'm not even going to go there. I might have time another day on the internet, but on, on Instagram, but for now we'll we'll just let that one go. But what to expect when you're opening your first pizzeria outside of the norm. When I, and I did the Google search, you know, how to, how to open a pizzeria. And I think there's some, I think there's some good information out there, but on the surface, it's all very general and it, and none of it, and none of it gives you the real, what to expect. It's kind of like a, where, where did I, you know, it's, it's, it's very generic. Choose your, Choose your style, create a business plan, decide on a location, uh, start start a, a bank account with a DBA and an EIN number, uh, design your brand. And it's, you know, it's got everything, you know, just just listed out or excuse me, you know, segmented out as if, you know, all these things just happen in, in perfect in perfect order and on time and, and or whatever. And I'm just here to tell you that. Some of these things happen throughout the entire process. Some of these things happen step by step as in in normal projects. And some of these things never happen depending on what they are. So when it, when it comes to what to expect and I, and I had, and I got three things on the list. I wanted to just paint this picture. Like when you're, when you're doing this for the first time, it's, it's a lesson, you know, it's like, it's like college. It's like a, a, an experience and a learning experience because a lot of the things in the process are going to happen to you for the first time as well, unless you've been open in other restaurants. But if this is your first restaurant, your first restaurant, your first pizzeria, a lot of what's about to happen to you is going to be new and it's going to be, it, it has the potential to be, to become a major hindrance or a setback if you're not prepared for it. The first one is that it's going to cost you more than you think. And that's the reality. 
if you had a plan and you thought you were you were going to do this for one hundred and fifty thousand, I'm here to tell you it's going to cost you more than that. If your plan was to build it for two hundred and fifty thousand, it's probably going to cost you more than that. And not saying that you that you can't build a pizzeria for under two fifty or under one hundred and fifty. You most certainly can. You most certainly can. You can you can build a pizzeria for forty thousand, fifty thousand. But what I'm telling you is that whatever you expect it to cost, it is going to cost you more because of the things that you don't know, because of because of the the things behind the walls, the things behind the the pipes under the building, because of all of the all of the things that you you haven't experienced and that you don't know. It's going to cost you more. Example. You you t- you lease a space, beautiful space in a historic district. You got a this great building that's a hundred years old and everybody walks past it and it's going to be fine, but it's never been a restaurant. So now you got to put a hood in it and you got to update the electrical and all these things. And what looked like it was going to be this simple turnaround job became something much more, much more bigger in scope. Or you had, you failed an inspection, a plumbing inspection. And because of that fail, you had to change the way some of the, some of the drains were piped. Now that changes the, the scope of your work and you have to get your plans redrawn and it's going to cost you time and it's going to cost you money. Like no one tells you that, you know, having sealed plans is going to cost you an extra couple of thousand dollars. No one, no one's telling you that if you take that beautiful space at the bottom of that apartment building, that you're going to have an extra long hood run and that's going to run you 20 to 40% more. Those are some of the things that, that just seem to get, seem to get left out of, you know, the, the generalized advice. And, and I get it. The reason why is because every situation is unique and, you know, the, the best advice that I can give you is to work with reputable people who are, who are experienced locally, because a lot of what happens in the process and especially in the construction process, right? A lot of what happens in the construction process is controlled heavily by local guidelines. So it's to your benefit to work with people who have done things locally and understand how things work. Like a relationship with a front desk person in a permitting office could mean could be the difference between a one week wait or a five week wait on having changes approved. And weeks cost time, weeks cost thousands in the construction process, because sometimes things can't start until something else finish finishes. You can't do your, you can't hang your drywall until you flint until the roughing has been approved. You know what I mean? So like you, you need to understand that these things are going to, there's, there's so much unknown and there's so much unexpected and there's so much local nuance that it's, it's generally going to cost you more than what you were, than what you were expecting. The second one is that it's going to take you longer than you plan. What's going to take longer? All of it's going to take longer than what you plan. It's going to take you longer to find the right space. It's going to take you longer to find to find the right people. It's going to take you longer to make money. It's going to take you longer to build it. It's going to take longer than what than what it costs for on paper because of the same reasons that I just told you, because so much happens. So much happens that that requires changes and pivot and restructuring and reworking and you know, re-estimating the timeline or, for example, like the building permit. If something, something that's going to take you, you know, that if a change happens, you fail, say you fail an inspection on, and I, and I've seen this happen. Say you fail an inspection on the grade of your patio, meaning how, how steep is the runoff of your patio? How fast is that water going to run off and at what degree? If you fail that, that means you got to bust up the concrete, repave it, make sure it's at the right grade and then have it reinspected. That's going to cost you a lot of time and sometimes you can speed that up. But what's that going to cost you? That's going to cost you more money. So. Money and time. <laughs> you want faster, cost more money. You want to save money. Sometimes it's going to slow the process or reduce the quality of the project. And and that can't be an option either. Like you can't, you can't sacrifice the quality. And 
I know what happens. I know that sometimes that equip that piece of equipment changes in the middle of the process because look, now that we're halfway down the road, I don't need that Mac Daddy hood. Just give me give me something that's gonna suit my needs. Oh, I didn't know it was gonna cost me an extra 30. Can you you got another one? Because you because your project can't just take on change after change after change after change when it comes to scope, because every change in scope costs money. Every change in scope costs money. So be prepared for the process to take. It, and it doesn't mean it's going to take much longer, but just understand that it's going to take longer than you expect. Permitting does not happen fast anymore, especially in Florida where I'm at. I think, I think permitting offices take pride in slowing somebody's project down even though they want to see growth and development in, in some of these cities, especially the smaller cities, they still, there's still so many layers that, that slow the processes down. It could be waiting for someone in the same office, but because of, because of the nuance, they're not even allowed to communicate until something else happens. Somebody that's literally feet away from them. That's how I, and it, and it becomes to, you know, that simple sometimes. So first one is going to cost you more than you think. Second one is going to take you much longer than you plan. And the last one, as I flip my notepad, is that it's going to be a whole lot more work than the job that you left to come do this. And that's, and that's also, you know, the hard, the hard part to swallow is that you left one job so that you can come do 10 jobs when you're starting out. And that's okay because the reward at the end of it is should far exceed what, what you were working on or doing before that. Right. Meaning you get, if you do it the right way, you, you have put in whatever work and time required to buy yourself the, the freedom, whether it's like my boy Jay says, time, freedom, financial freedom, you know, peace of mind, legacy, you know, all the, all the things that, drive us to get into this, into business or to go into business for ourselves or to, or to become entrepreneurs. You've seen my children on here. I love my kids. They, they love what we do. It makes, it makes me it's ecstatic to know that my kids love, love this and could see themselves walking in my footsteps and doing the same thing. However, that doesn't take away from the work that it, that, that it took to get to this point. You're going to, you're going to leave. A lot of folks are going to leave jobs where they're making a lot more money and doing a lot less work than they're about to do for the next couple of years in this pizzeria. And I, and I'm serious about a couple of years, but that's okay. Because if, if you run, if, if, if you've already decided that's, that that's worth it for you and the fruit that's at the end of it is, 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 is much sweeter, man, roll your sleeves up and go get it and go get it. But understand that it's going to be tougher because there, there's just so many things to it. I mean, you're going to have, I'm, look, I'm looking at the checklist. The admin list is longer than they, than all of them. And if you're a pizza guy, like I'm a pizza guy, I, I love making pies. I love being in the kitchen. I love working with my hands. I do not love the admin work. That's the longest list. That's the longest list of items on the checklist is the admin. You have to deal with that. There's operational things to deal with. There's marketing. There's HR. There's there's. There's vendor relationships to manage. There's technology that you have to understand. We, we spent an extra hour, you know, in the store the other night trying to rework our network because we needed to find a spot on the switch so that we can plug in the new Apple Pay terminal. Now, let's either learn and understand how to do some of these things or pay somebody to do it, depending on what position you're in. I like we like doing things. We figure stuff out. But that that means that you're doing you're doing more than what you were expecting. And that happens a lot. That happens a lot, especially if you don't have people. So that's the third one. This is going to this is going to be much harder than what you were than what you're probably currently doing. And that's OK. That's all right. You just got to decide if that's worth it for you. So number one is going to cost more money than what you expect. Number two is going to take much longer than what you plan. And number three is going to be much harder than what you're currently doing. But. If you decide that that's worth it for you, it can be incredibly value for you, invaluable for your future. You just got to decide if it's worth it for you. I'll finish with my team building tip. 
And, you know, for my leaders out there who are who are currently running stores and, and have, you know, have a team, you got staff in place. The, the ultimate cheat code in leadership is the calendar planning your calendar. If you want to, if you want to do what it takes to buy more time for yourself, more free time, more family time, you want to, you want to take some vacations. You want to really enjoy the fruits of all this labor that you've been putting in for a couple of days. The calendar is your best friend. You need to get yourself into the the habit of planning the events of your life through your calendar and communicating that with the people who need to understand and know what you're doing and what you got going on, right? Calendar means nothing if the, your your leadership team doesn't know, doesn't know anything about your calendar. But some of my tips and what I would tell you to start doing first is, hey, plan out the big items. If you look at your at a, at a year and you look, look, we know that we like to take vacation, you know, around the 4th of July, let's block those dates out. Or you got dentist appointments and things like that that need to be scheduled, kids, kid functions, things like that. Get all that stuff on a calendar so that you can start to have the conversa- the necessary conversations because the, one of the challenges in in what we do and in the restaurant business is that there's constant change, especially when it when it comes to people and schedules and things like that, right? People quit, new people come on, things happen, life happens outside of work that we sometimes just things that happen that, that aren't planned. And, you know, when people aren't there, that doesn't mean that those jobs just, just stop existing. Someone's got to cover, someone's got to help out. Some, you know, the slack has to be picked up and the same thing happens in your absence, right? If you're not there, then the processes that you're in charge of need to be handled. So the best way to handle that is to plan for, is to plan for these things. If you know that you need to be off on Mondays, let's plan on what our Sundays and Tuesdays look like. Like, work through really getting your calendar together because that'll help you organize all of the tasks and the to-dos that are going on in your head. And it'll help you start to delegate some of the things that are just not as critical and as important. If you start to, if you really start to, you know, task out your day and list out all the things that you're handling, you start to realize some of these things don't, don't need to happen. And you start eating the big frogs, you start eating the nasty, ugly frogs. Check that from the book, Next Level Leadership. Hold on. Let me drop a shameless plug up in here. Shameless plug. Look, get organized. Look, if you need help understanding, you know, how to how to improve your productivity, get more organized, you know, set better goals, morning routines, night routines, things like that. Jump on next level leadership. Come on now. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it everywhere. But that's not what we're that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about calendar planning. So what I was saying was, if if you can start to really organize your 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 thoughts and your tasks and your to dos, you start to you start to naturally place priority on things, and lower priority things, even though they're not as important for you, can be a very critical part in somebody else's development. Pass some of that stuff off. Use your calendar. Use your calendar. Use your calendar to help plan your your tasks and your days and your weeks and months, but to also help. Your your junior leaders start to understand and organize their own processes and and task and to do's and everybody gets better because of it. So get your get yourself in your calendar, get that calendar together and get yourself next level. Don't forget to get the to go get that, get that book. You can get it on Tyrone dot com. And that's all we got today. It's been it's been a pleasure. Look, I love I love doing this. Always, always appreciate all of the downloads, all of the love, all the shares. Go leave us a review. Go leave us some feedback. Five star ratings all over the place. Do all that good stuff. It's your boy Tyrell Reed. Can't wait to get back next week. Pizza King Podcast. We out. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Pizza King podcast with Tyrell Reed. If you enjoyed today's discussion, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Your feedback means the world to me. Got a topic you love to cover or a question that you want answered? Shoot me an email at info at tyrellreed.com or reach out to me on Instagram at Pizza King Podcast. I love hearing from all of the listeners.